OK, so in this short introduction, we're going to explain what we do in our Windows Forms Applications development course for .NET Framework version 3.5. So my name's Doug Rees. I'm going to be your instructor on the course, and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and have been for over 10 years now. I'm certified in all the .NET sort of strands from the original sort of MCAD days through to MCSD, .NET version 1, now MCTS, Microsoft Certified Professional Developer as well, .NET 2, and also .NET 3.5 in all of the uh, main tracts. I've trained for various different companies throughout the years, but the main two companies I've worked for have been QA training for several years, and I was also the lead uh, .NET instructor for the training camp slash firebrand training, as they're now known, for uh, six years as their instructor. Most of my time, however, is spent doing consultancy and actually doing development for various different companies. I've worked for Microsoft. That was involving actually writing courses for Microsoft on .NET and on SQL Server. I've also worked for BAE Systems, Polo Ralph Lauren, and Kamuka Worldwide with various other companies as well. Uh, currently, I'm actually working for Ralph Lauren on uh, several Windows-based applications, so that's been very handy in uh, refreshing some of my knowledge of Windows courses uh, for developing this course, so that I could uh, put in some extra information in that. So why would you consider online training? The main reason is that you can study at your leisure, and that you can replay sections over and over again until you're happy with a particular topic. You can study on a train, a plane, at home, at the office. It's up to you. You can work through the demonstrations in your own time. There's no pressure to complete them by a certain time uh, scale. And also, they're quite a, a cheaper alternative online courses than a traditional course. Of course, they're much greener these days than traveling to a training center, uh, paying for flights, hotel accommodation, and, uh, and maybe you know, train fares or whatever it might be. So the main thing here is you are in control of how much or how little you study at any one point in time. So what's included in this course? Well, what we provide is over 20 hours of instructor-led presentation and demonstrations that obviously, as I've said, you can replay as many times as you need to. So that involves me going through the topics in slides format, as well as actually walking through each and every demonstration line by line. The demonstrations are also available in both Visual Basic and C Sharp as downloadable source code that you can view offline and you can work with those demonstrations as a main learning tool. We include printable PDFs of the slides for note-taking so that you can make your own notes as you go and you can use it as a quick reminder before you attempt the exam. We'll include top tips on exam techniques and top topics, as well as a sort of a general review of best practice for handling uh, exam questions and also a quick overview of summary of each topic that we've covered. You'll have one year access to the online version of the course, including any updates that we make, as well as the option to purchase a DVD if you'd prefer to have a permanent copy. What we don't include, however, is the MS Press book itself. It's your choice whether to purchase the MS Press book, but we highly recommend it. But it's a way of us keeping our costs down to you so that you can choose to purchase the book if you wish to. We also don't include any practice tests because, firstly, not everyone wants to take an exam, and there's lots of different companies out there that we can recommend for you. So why do we use a Microsoft Press book? Well, there are several reasons, including the fact that they've actually been designed by Microsoft to kind of cover around about 90% of the exam objectives. Now that's not in-depth coverage of them, it's some overview coverage, and obviously that's why you purchase the course, to give you the detailed coverage that you really need to pass the exam. It's quite a good study guide and reference book that you can use after you've studied for your exam as well, and it also contains very useful step-by-step -step lab exercises. Plus you get a free copy of Visual Studio as a trial edition for 90 days, and you also get a practice test. The price varies, but approximately £30 from Amazon in the UK is a typical price you'll find most places. If you already own, own version 2 of the book, there's no real need to purchase version 3.5 because the additions are relatively small and we cover all of those additions in the actual course itself. Finally, you also get an exam discount voucher which gives you 15% off your actual Microsoft exam. So here's a list and two slides of what we actually cover in the course. This is a breakdown pretty much based on the, uh, the course outline in the MS Press book. The first chapter is on Windows Forms and the user interface. So this is a gentle sort of introduction into the actual uh, way to create controls on Windows Forms and create Windows Forms projects. That chapter goes for approximately an hour and 16 minutes. We then have a chapter on configuring controls and creating the user interface. This is really just more controls, is what that chapter is about, and it runs at around about 51 minutes. 
third chapter is advanced Windows Forms controls. So we talk about some more advanced features such as tree views and list views, etc. And that one is just under two hours. Chapter four is on tool strips, menus, and events. So how to actually create toolbars or tool strips as they're known, and also menus and handle their events such as uh, mouse down events, etc. That one's just under a one hour chapter. Chapter five is where we start talking about data and we have a whole section on creating connections and connecting to a database at about 53 minutes long followed by another chapter on working with data in a connected environment that focuses primarily on command objects and data readers and how to actually read and uh, also update data that one's just under two hours at an hour 54 chapter 7 create add delete and edit data in a disconnected environment this introduces the big topic about data sets, data tables, data views, and how to work with data in an offline mode. That one is a 2 hour 20 minute chapter. Chapter 8 introduces data binding of controls. So we take our data sets from our previous chapter and we bind them with things like the data grid view control inside a Windows Forms application. Data binding is a really useful feature for most day-to-day -day applications that you're going to work with, so that's a, a one-hour chapter. Chapter 9 is working with XML. This is actually taking XML documents, loading them into memory, manipulating them, and saving them back out. So that chapter is an hour and 11 minutes. Chapter 10, printing in Windows Forms relatively short uh, chapter there, only about 36 minutes on just how to do printing using the various dialog boxes and looking at printing permissions as well. Chapter 11, Advanced Topics in Windows Forms. This is kind of a, a mixed chapter with things such as drag and drop behavior, also MDI applications and uh, using the clipboard etc. So this one is uh, just under an hour and a half that chapter. Chapter 12, Enhancing Usability, covers accessibility and also various other controls such as the tooltip control and the help controls to allow you to enhance the user's experience. An hour and 16 for that one. Chapter 13, Asynchronous Programming Techniques. In that section we cover the background worker component, which is a vital section from the exam point of view, something that's heavily tested. So we spend 30 minutes, 32 minutes, on the background worker component. We also have an additional appendix, number 16, threading and asynchronous appendix, which is an hour and 23 minutes, and that covers a lot more information about asynchronous programming, such as delegates and multi-threaded applications. Chapter 14 is creating Windows Forms controls. So this is creating your own controls, such as user controls and custom controls. And it's just an hour and eight minutes long. Chapter 15 is a very big chapter, in fact, the, the biggest chapter of the course, on deployment, which is heavily examinable and covers things such as click once deployment, set up projects, and also user account control behavior. So that one's two hours, 31. As I said, we have a, a threading and asynchronous appendix, and we also have a graphics appendix, which goes through some GDI plus behavior in Windows Forms at 31 minutes long. As far as prerequisites, you will need to have a reasonable understanding of, of the Visual Basic .NET language or the C Sharp uh, language. We assume you understand the syntax, therefore we don't waste any time with actually teaching you the syntax. We just delve into the Windows Forms behavior. We also assume you know the basics of how to work with Visual Studio, whether that's 2003 or later, even though the course is developed around 2008. The entire course uses over one gigabyte of bandwidth, so if you are going to be watching this online uh, frequently, you just need to realize that some of these chapters are quite uh, large in, in size, and so therefore you'll need the appropriate bandwidth to, to cater that. You won't have any problems with the streaming, I'm talking about the total bandwidth, perhaps if you're only allowed a, a limited monthly capped value. You could always consider the DVD option if this is an issue. You need Silverlight 3 installed on your computer. Silverlight 2 will work, but Silverlight 3 gives a better visual uh, representation of the recording. And of course, you'll need a computer capable of actually running Visual Studio 2008. So, there you have it, a summary of our Windows course for .NET 3.5 for the 7505 exam. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at blackbarit.com and you can also go to our website at www.blackbarit.com for further information.